Prophetic Word, God's Glorious End Time Church, shared October 23, 2020. Dear brothers and sisters, during the past few weeks, I've been spending a lot of quality time with the Lord in our secret place, praying, fasting, interceding, and studying together. The Lord has shared many things with me, including some mysteries hidden in His Word. I am in awe of Him. I got to write three separate words for His church, but was not given the permission to share until yesterday morning, when He spoke to me in my sleep and said, Feed my people. This particular prophetic word was written about three weeks ago. I asked the Lord, Lord, what are you doing these days? And He answered me, saying, I am preparing my end-time church. Then he asked me to put on my spiritual glasses so that I could see what is happening around the world through his eyes. With my spiritual glasses on, my perception was adjusted so I could see what our Lord, the great mastermind, has been up to behind the scenes. It is he, the great I am, the majesty who sits on the throne, who has been orchestrating the events. Our world is currently upside down, for the Lord is allowing Satan power to wreak havoc, just like Judas Iscariot was allowed a time to do the devil's bidding when he betrayed Jesus. Much more will be unleashed upon the earth as the Lord allows many more devastating calamities to occur. Take heart, for that which the devil meant for evil, the Lord will turn it for good and use it for his glory for the purpose of preparing his end-time church. The Lord has looked down upon the earth and has seen an incredible amount of idolatry, perversion, wickedness, greed, corruption, materialism, worldliness, and witchcraft that has infiltrated the church. He is greatly grieved by such and is no longer going to allow people to play church by offering him a lukewarm type of worship. He wants all of our hearts. The time of cleansing, the season of pressing and crushing, is at hand, for the Lord is going to use the calamities that will come to refine His people into what is going to become His glorious end-time church, without wrinkles nor stain. Jesus loved the church so much that He gave himself up, himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Ephesians 5, 25-27 There is no turning back nor changing the Lord's mind on the impeding calamities that are about to take place. The Lord said that there is nothing that is hidden from him. The time has come for him to separate the wheat from the weeds. Through the passages he gave me in Ezekiel 8, Hosea chapters 1 to 7, and Jeremiah 45 and 44 and 45, the Lord gave me a visual of what he is looking at from up above and why this process is now crucial. I highly recommend reading through these scriptures yourself. Luke 3 9. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The words the Lord had given me to elaborate on for this prophetic word were wine, oil, fire, grain, and harvest. You will see how these pieces are intricately woven together into one special message. After much ded dedication, the Lord gave me the proper interpretation pertaining to the wine in the context of this word. It is meant to represent transformation. He spoke to me through a, so a song a friend of mine shared, New Wine, in which I was reminded of the process of crushing and pressing of grapes in order to make wine. This procedure or transformation is vital to reach the result of an optimum flavor fit for kings and for feasts, as it's mentioned in many passages of scriptures. The next word was fire, which could have various meanings. However, again, in the context of this word, it represents cleansing, purifying. The Lord is setting up his refining fire, for he is a jealous God. No longer can the things of this world be allowed to take precedence in our lives. 
All sin must be cleansed so that once gone through the fire, the finished product, which is the pure gold, will arise. Malachi 3, 2 and 3 But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. The Lord has been calling his people into a deeper intimacy with him. Some of his children have accepted his invitation and have made some serious changes in their lives by their way of repenting, praying, and abiding in his word. And they have been filled with greater giftings of the Holy Spirit and are now basking into the glory of his magnificent revelations. However, many others have not yielded to the Lord's calling. Instead, they have ignored, scorned, mocked, and even rebuked his invite. These have held on to the pleasures of the world, their love of money, and have allowed all sorts of sin to take root into their lives. At this time, the same will be granted a time of testing, such that, once completed, they may become like pure gold and be added to those who have already gone through the process and fill their lamps with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Then the Lord led me to learn the various stages of the grain harvest, the threshing floor, the winnowing, and the sifting to further understand His refining process of the church. I had to do some research on this, but I was amazed at how the grain harvest and the Lord's first harvest resemble each other. Similarly to winemaking, the production of fine flour involves a crushing and a pressing. In olden days, the threshing floor was an area where the picked grain was thrown to be trampled over by donkeys, sometimes tied to sleds with kids on it for weight. The animal was made to trample over it again and again until the pressed crushed grain would eventually separate from the hard husk. Those who have not learned to live a pure and holy life and to make the Lord their priority will undergo this process. The amount of crushing and processing that will occur will be dependent on the amount of sin that has taken root into their lives and which is hindering them from reaching their full potential in Christ. The end time church will be a refined church. Luke 3.17 His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The winnowing entailed using a winnowing fork to toss the crushed grain into the air such that the chaff would fly away, be collected, and then burned while the grain would fall back to the ground. This process further refines the grain and brings it one step closer to its finished product. Once the deep roots of, and the chains of sin are destroyed in us, the Lord can continue to refine us by further removing more of the flaws of sin that is left. The end time church will be a purified church. During the final stage of the harvest, the grain that has fallen back on the ground and is contaminated with soil and debris will undergo a sifting process to shake off all the impurities. Lastly, the Lord will allow a final shaking in us and make us pure, holy, without stain, without wrinkles. The end time church will be a holy church. Please note that just like fine flour mixed with oil and then placed over fire makes the most holy part of food offering, as described in Leviticus 2, so is the end time church coated with the Holy Spirit's anointing and placed over the Lord's refining fire. Another interesting fact I learned was that the Jewish temple, the one built by King Solomon in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 and verse 1, was built on the threshing floor. God's sanctuary had for its foundation the threshing floor, where the harvest process begins for us as believers. Inside the temple, we read about the main hall, the ceiling beams, the door frames, walls, doors overlaid with gold. That is us, the glorious bride of Christ, who has gone through its sanctification process and is now ready to undertake whatever is coming at us, 
during this last chapter before our bridegroom appears on the clouds of glory. During this next phase, we are going to witness this separation between the wheat and the weeds. God is going to expose all the sins in our current churches and those who have been worshiping him only with their lips and uncircumcised hearts will have to make a final decision on who they want to serve. There will be those who will not last through the pressing and the crushing and will give up on God and deny him. And there will be those who will withstand the process and will come out as pure gold. We're also going to witness the fulfillment of Matthew 25, 14 to 30, where the Lord will do an inspection of what we have done with the talents we have been given. Those who have used their talents and produced much fruit will be rewarded with more talents. Those who haven't produced any fruit will lose even the one talent they were originally given. His end time church will be fully equipped to withstand any attack from the enemy while witnessing incredible miracles as we await the return of our King Jesus, also known as the Rapture. Finally, the oil. This represents the oil in our lamps, the Holy Spirit. The Lord is going to lavish his end time bride with great anointing. He will increase our talents and will renew in us a new zeal, a new passion and desire for the things of God. His end time church will be a fearless warrior church and as such will be unshaken by what we will witness around in the physical because the Holy Spirit inside us will give us courage to face the giants, beat the enemy and put our faith into action. We will be the ones who will carry the torch through the second harvest, the one for the unbelievers. The power and authority of God will dwell inside us. We will truly live as extensions of Jesus' feet and hands in a hopeless world. May the grace and love of Jesus be with you all. Hallelujah.